Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. And this is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, leelaya. Vishvesham satchidanandam, vandeham yokhilan jagat. Chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, leelaya. We are studying the Tatpurusha Samasa. Tatpurusha Samasa is one of the four Samasas stated in Sanskrit. Avyayi Bhava, Tatpurusha, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva. Tatpurusha Samasa is a very important type of the Samasa. This can be said to be the most productive of the Samasas. Tatpurusha Samasa also has many varieties in comparison with other Samasas. We also stated that there are numerous sutras composed by Panini to explain the Tatpurusha Samasa in comparison with the other Samasas, be it Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra or Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutra or Samasa Swara. Vidhayaka Sutra. Tatpurusha Samasa is very special and a very big umbrella. The formation of the Tatpurusha Samasa can be shown in brief in the form of this particular equation. So we have x plus y and x and y they both are independent and separate entities and they have independent and separate meanings, they have independent and separate word form, as well as independent and separate accent. Now the speaker of Sanskrit decides that these two are to be merged together and one output is to be generated. So the compound process happens and the output generated is xy. Now this becomes one unit in terms of meaning, also in terms of the word form and also in terms of the accent. So xy becomes a unit in the sentence and it gets connected with external words. Now xy are peculiar in Tatpurusha because y assumes the head position semantically as well as otherwise. That is the reason why Y is shown in bold characters on this slide. So in the Tatpurusha Samasa, the by default position is that the Uttarapada or the second member or the final member of the compound assumes the headship. So when XY gets related to the other words in the sentence, the external words in the sentence, those relations will happen primarily through Y. And X cannot be interrelated with any external word in the sentence without going through Y. When X is interrelated with any such word which is external, such as Samasa, is considered to be an exception and then it is noted down as an asamartha samasa. Another important point to be noted over here is that X and Y even though are stated to be simple over here, they could be also having complex 
structures, which means that the xy that is generated can also also become x or y later on and then it will be treated as one unit and then it can get further compounded. This process is recursive and theoretically there is no end. It can go on until the speaker of the language, namely Sanskrit, exhaust his or her vocabulary, theoretically. We also stated that the many varieties of Tatpurusha Samasa start with the Vibhakti Tatpurusha in the Ashtadhyayi. So we studied the Vibhakti Tatpurusha. We studied Dvitiya, Tritiya, Chaturthi, Panchami, Saptami and Shashti in that order. And after studying the Vibhakti Tatpurusha, we highlighted the fact that the Samasa or the Samartha theory is based on the Karaka theory. Now we are studying the Karmadharaja Samasa, which is stated in 2149 up to 2172. We have studied some sutras in the Karmadharaya Samasa, and we noted that the Adhikara which governs the Karmadharaya section is Samanadhi Karanena. Now the term Karmadharaya is defined in the grammar of Panini as Tatpurushaha. Samanadhi Karanaha Tatpurushaha Samanadhi Karanaha Karmadharaya What this means is that that Tatpurusha in which the constituents denote one and the same entity as referent is termed Karmadharaya I repeat that Tatpurusha in which the constituents denote one and the same entity as referent is termed karma dharaya. The state of being samanadhi karana is called samanadhi karanya, and the and samanadhi karanya is defined by the tradition in the following manner: bhinna pravritti nimittasya anekasya shabdasya ekasmin arthe vrittihi samanadhi karanyam. Many words whose purpose of usage is different when they stand for one and the same entity those words are stated to be co-referential and this is the semantic relatedness between those words and based on this relatedness those words get compounded according to the sutra that we have been studying and such a samasa is called karma dharaya. Now let us proceed in studying the next sutra in the section. This is a very big sutra and I'll read the sutra for you. Ota yuvatis toka katipaya grashti dhenu vashavehad bashkayani pravaktra shrotriya dhyapaka dhurtaihi jatihi. There are only two words in the sutra, two padas in the sutra. They are, I repeat, pota, I repeat, pota yuvatis toka katipaya drishti dhenu vashavehad bashkayani pravaktra shrotriya dhyapaka dhurtaihi jatihi. The first word consists of several constituents, pota, yuvati, stoka, katipaya, drishti, Dhenu, Vasha, Vehat, Bashkayani, Pravaktru, Shrotriya, Adhyapaka, and Dhurta. And the second Pada is Jatihi. This is 2165. Now the first word ending in Dhurtaihi is in the instrumental plural, which is 3 slash 3 which means with these words. The second pada is jatihi, which is one slash one, and this refers to words denoting species. Now because this word appears in the Prathama Vibhakti, the sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam applies and assigns the term Upasarjana to the word that denotes species. And then 
Upasarjanam Purvam applies and ensures that this Upasarjana occupies the initial position of the compound. Upasarjanam Purvam, what is known as Purva Nipata. Words continued are Sup Sahasupa, Samartha Padavidhihi, and also Samanadhi Karanena 3 slash 1, meaning with the same referent. So the overall meaning of the sutra is the following. Any subanta whose pratipadika denotes species jatihi is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta with ota etc. as internal constituents. So the meaning once again is the following. Any subanta whose pratipadika denotes species is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta with pota etc. as internal constituents. So the structure can be shown in the following manner. If we have jati plus su and pota plus su, jati plus su is the purvapada, pota plus su is the uttarapada, then the compound output generated would be jati pota etc. and that will be the output of the samasa. Now let us see what these peculiar words stand for. What do they mean? So the first word is pota also explained as ubhaya vyanjana meaning one which has signs of both male as well as female. She is referred to as pota. Grishti is ekavara prasuta, one who has delivered once. Dhenu is pratyagra prasuta, newly delivered. Vasha is vandhya, barren. Vehat means Garbhaghatini, embryo killer. Bashkayani means Tarunavatsa, one whose calf is young. And the other words are quite well known. So we go now to the examples. So when the meaning is a female elephant with symbols of both genders, and we have ibha cha sau pota cha. So ibha refers to the female elephant and pota refers to this ubhaya venjana. Now what they actually are referring to is one and the same entity, namely the female elephant. So there is samanadhi karanya and so there is samarthya, there is semantic relatedness. And so now the speaker intends to make a compound out of the words ibha and pota and then the process of compounding begins. So we have ibha plus su plus pota plus su as the alaukika vigraha and then the samasa saudhnya takes place and then the pratipadika saudhnya takes place and then the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and deletes both the supratyayas so we have ibha plus zero plus pota plus zero as the output. Now at this stage, because ibha and pota, they both are samanadhikarana and both of them are in the feminine gender. So the sutra, striya pumvat samanadhikarane, etc. that applies, 6.334. And so now ibha, is moved back to its root form and that is ibha. Striya pumvat bhashita pumska danung samanadhikarane striyam apurani priyadishu that is the sutra and so now in accordance with this sutra ibha is substituted by the pratipadika form ibha and so we have ibha plus zero plus pota plus zero and then finally, we derive the compound output in the form of ibha pota. 
which means the same thing as ibhacha saupotacha. In the similar fashion, one can also derive forms like ibha, yuvati, and so on. A young elephant. Then we have the meaning little fire, agnihi stokaha. We follow the same procedure and we note that there is the semantic relatedness in the form of co-referentiality because the word agni and stoka, they are referring to the fire only and so we have samanadi karanya. So both these words can be compounded and we get the compound output in the form of Agni Stoka, after having performed all the operations that we stated earlier. Similarly, when the meaning to be expressed is some buttermilk, then we do the same procedure and we ensure that there is semantic relatedness and after the procedure is over, we get the compound output namely Udashvit Katipayam. Similarly, when we have the meaning, a cow who has delivered once, we ensure that there is semantic relatedness and then the samasa saudhya etc. happens and at, at the end of the derivation process, we get the compound output, go grushti. Similarly, when the meaning is to be expressed, namely, a cow who is newly delivered, we get the compound output go dhenu, after having performed all the operations, after having ensured that there is semantic relatedness. Similarly, when the meaning is to be expressed, namely a barren cow, we get the compound output go basha, following the same procedure. Also, when the meaning is a cow whose calf is young, we get the compound output go bashkayani, Finally, when we have the meaning, one who is a preacher and also belongs to the family of Katha, we get the form Katha Pravakta as there is semantic relatedness, co-referentiality. And of course, the words mentioned in the Sutra, they are part of the compound. So the conditions are fulfilled. So Katha Pravakta is the finally derived compound output. Similarly, when we want to say one who knows Veda and also belongs to the family of Katha, where Shrotriya means one who knows Veda, and then we get the compound output Katha Shrotriya. Similarly, when we have the meaning one who is a teacher and also belongs to the family Katha, we get the compound output Katha Dhyapaka. Finally, when we express the meaning one who is smart and also belongs to the family Katha, we get the compound output Katha Dhurta by doing all the procedure that is stated earlier for the derivation of the compound. Next we go to the next Sutra, Prasham Savachanaischa. This is 2.166. This sutra has got two padas, prashamsa vachanaihi, which is instrumental plural 3 slash 3, with words indicating praise or respect. Cha is an indeclinable and meaning and. Words continued are sup and sahasupa, Samartha Padavidhihi and also Samanadhi Karanena 3 slash 1 meaning with the same referent. The other word continued is Jatihi. This is 1 slash 1 of Jati meaning words denoting species. Now because of the Prathama Vibhakti this word is assigned the term Upasarjana by the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam and then by the Sutra Upasarjanam Purvam this 
Upasarjana occupies the initial position of the Samasa. So now we have the meaning any Subanta whose Pratipadika denotes species is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent Subanta which denotes praise or respect. Repeat, any Subanta whose Pratipadika denotes species is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent Subanta which denotes praise or respect. So we have Jati plus Su as the Purva Pada and Prashamsavachana plus Su as the Uttara Pada and finally we get Jati Prashamsavachana as the compound output. Now the Prashamsavachanas are the following Matallika, Macharachika, Prakandam, Uddha and Tallaja. These are the Rudhi Shabdas expressing prashamsa, praise or respect. So now we have the meaning the best cow or the best bull. This is the meaning to be expressed. And now we have gauhu matallika as the laukika vigraha where the word matallika means the best. So now there is semantic relatedness because Go and Matallika, even though mean different, they are referring to one and the same entity, namely the cow or the bull. And so there is compounding that is possible. And so we start the process of compounding. So first we do the Alaukika Vigraha, Go plus Su plus Matallika plus Su, and then Samasa Saudhnya takes place. So Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place and so Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and so we have Go plus zero plus Matallika plus zero. And so finally we get the compound output in the form of Go Matallika. And similarly we'll get the compound output in the form of Go Macharachika, Go Prakandam and Gavodhaha and go tallajaha, all of them will mean the best cow or bull. Go macharchika, go prakandam, go or go tallajaha. One of the important points to be noted over here is that the gender of these words is fixed. So go macharchika will be feminine, go prakandam neuter, go masculine, go tallajaha masculine. Now let us proceed to 2167. This is Yuva Khalati Palita Valina Jarati Bhihi. 2167. In this sutra, there are two padas. The first one is Yuva, and the second one is Khalati Palita Valina Jarati Bhihi. In this sutra, the first Pada is Yuva, which is in 1 slash 1. Yuva means youth. And so the word Yuva is termed Upasarjana by the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam. And the Sutra Upasarjanam Purvam will ensure that this Pada Yuva occupies the initial position of the Samasa. The Purva Nipata will take, take place. The second pada is Khalati Palita Valina Jarati Bhihi. This is in the instrumental plural 3 slash 3, which means with these words Khalati Palita Valina and Jarati. The words continued are Sup and Sahasupa, and also Samartha Padavidhihi, and also Samanadhikaranena. 3 slash 1 meaning with the same referent. Khalati means bald, palita means old, and valina means wrinkled, 
and jarati means aging this is very peculiar because yuva and these words they are semantically related in co-referentiality relation so yuva and kalati they are intended by the speaker to be in the relation of co-referentiality so the meaning of the sutra is a subanta whose pratipadika is yuva is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta with constituents as kalati palita valina and jarati i repeat a subanta whose pratipadika is yuva is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta with constituents as kalati palita valina and jarati so we have yuvati plus su as purva pada and kalati plus su as uttara pada and then we get the compound output namely yuvati kalati etc one thing to be noted over here is that even though the word mentioned in the sutra is yuva and the other words mentioned in the sutra are kalati etc the compound output contains the word yuvati and not yuva that is primarily because of the semantic relatedness which is the basic condition for the process of compounding now yuva being in masculine and kalati being in feminine there is no way they can refer to one and the same entities and so it is assumed that the word yuva here denotes the feminine form of yuva that is yuvati and then the samanadhi karanya or the co-referentiality works and so here the word meaning of yuva is extended to its feminine form by one of the maxims also stated on the slide pratipadika grahane linga visheshta syapik grahanam if a pratipadika is understood it also enables you to understand the same pratipadika qualified by a specific gender so if the word yuva is uttered in the sutra one can also understand the pratipadika yuva together with the feminine suffix qualifying it that means yuva can also stand for yuvati and then we get the desired output in the form of the compound that is yuvati khalati etc so now the meaning is the following yuva or yuvati khalati so bald young man or lady yuva or yuvati hi and khalati hi so we have yuvan or yuvati plus su plus khalati plus su now because the words yuvati and khalati they mean different things but they are referring here to one and the same entity so they are related in the form of co-referentiality and so now there is semantic relatedness and so now both these padas can be compounded and so the compounding process begins and we have alaukika vigraha namely yuvan or yuvati plus su plus khalati plus su the samasa saudnya takes place the pratipadika saudnya takes place and so now supodhatu pratipadika yoh applies and deletes both the supratyayas so we have yuvan or yuvati plus zero plus khalati plus zero so now here we have the n at the end of u1 deleted by nalop pratipadigantasya and so we have yuva or yuvati plus 0 plus khalati plus 0 and finally we get the compound output yuva khalati or yuvati khalati similarly we get the other compound outputs when we have the following meanings so now we have 
the old young man or lady that is to be conveyed and here we have yuva palitaha as the final compound output and also yuvati palita as feminine compound output similarly when we want to convey wrinkled young man or lady the compound output is yuva valina and also yuvati valina and then when we have the uh, the meaning to be expressed as aging young man or lady the compound output is yuva jaran or yuva jarati in yuva jarati even though the laukik avigraha is yuvati jarati the pumad bhava takes place and yuvati goes back to the pratipadika form yuvan where na gets deleted and we get the finally derived compound output in the form of yuva jarati where 6334 applies striya pumvat bhashita pumska danum samanadhikarane striyam apurani priyadeshu to summarize in the karma dharaya compound several special words are compounded in specific honorific sense matallika macharchika prakandam uddhatallajo etc these words primarily denote the best of the species they denote them by convention rudhi shabdah similarly there is a meta rule invoked in order to account for the co referentiality namely pratipadika grahane linga visishtasya api grahanam this meta rule says that a pratipadika also stands for the word form with the gender meaning added to it this is very interesting now we shall study some more sutras in the next lecture which explain the karma dharaya compound these are the texts referred to thank you very much